President Obama breaks out the checkbook with the first federal loan guarantee for a new nuclear power plant. It's good news for Burke County, Georgia, where thousands of clean energy jobs could be created. We talked to Southern Company CEO David Ratliff. And the White House details its plans for clean coal and the hurdles on getting carbon into the ground. From the Energy News Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Energy Report with Susan McGinnis. Good afternoon, I'm Susan McGinnis. Thanks for joining us for the Energy Report. The first new U.S. nuclear reactors in decades got White House backing today. The president announced eight and a third billion dollars in loan guarantees to help build two new Westinghouse units at Southern Company's Vodal Station. President Obama made the announcement himself before a union audience in Maryland today, saying the project will create some 3,500 construction jobs. And he said restarting the U.S. nuclear industry is long overdue and is part of the argument for comprehensive climate legislation. There are those who have long advocated for nuclear power, including uh, many Republicans, uh, who have to recognize that we're not going to achieve a big boost in nuclear capacity unless we also create a system of incentives to make clean energy profitable. That's not just my personal conclusion. It's the conclusion of many in the energy industry itself, including CEOs of the nation's largest utility companies. Energy leaders and experts recognize that as long as producing carbon pollution carries no cost, traditional plants that use fossil fuels will be more cost effective than plants that use nuclear fuel. That's why we need comprehensive energy and climate legislation. And the president said the loan guarantees would help bring nuclear manufacturing back to the U.S., a point stressed by Energy Secretary Stephen Chu. He told reporters the U.S. has been sitting on the sidelines of nuclear for too long, and he sees loan guarantees as helping the U.S. recapture the lead internationally. We, we gave the first conditional loan guarantee to an innovative solar power company last March. It was the first such guarantee since the 1980s. I'm determined to use this program to help restart America's nuclear power industry. Today's announcement is our first, first conditional commitment for a nuclear project, but it won't be the last. We have several other projects in the pipeline, and President Obama has requested an increase for this program in his budget. The President's budget would increase our loan guarantee authority for such projects by $36 billion to a total of $54.5 billion. And the president noted many environmentalists do traditionally oppose nuclear power, but said the U.S. must harness this carbon-free source to fight climate change. The announcement was called a step in the right direction by Republicans, including Georgia's two senators, but ran into a buzzsaw from some environmentalists. They claim nuclear construction costs will run amok, as happened in the 1980s, they say, and they want federal money to go to technologies like wind, solar, and efficiency. Well, the loan guarantees are conditional on Southern getting an NRC license to build two new reactors here, the Vodal plant on the Georgia-South Carolina border. Two 1,200 megawatt reactors are already operating at Vodal, but the site was originally planned to have four reactors. An NRC license is now in process for two more 1,100 megawatt reactors, and nuclear construction cannot begin until that license is issued. But today's $8.3 billion in loan guarantees is a critical step forward. This Good afternoon, Clean Skies Tyler Suters discussed the significance of the loan guarantee announcement with Southern CEO David Ratliff. Well, I think the administration's endorsement of nuclear energy as a viable and necessary technology for the future should heighten everybody's desire to see this as a successful project. So I'm as confident as anybody about our ability to get a certified design and an approved construction and operating license. Uh, which is more encouraging to you? Uh, Secretary Chu today emphasizing the fact that this will be the first of many loan guarantees or at least the program is going forward, or is it President Obama tying nuclear energy to a clean energy or perhaps climate legislation bill and also to job creation? Well, I think those are all one and the same. I mean, Secretary Chu is part of this administration and he's been a, a strong voice in support of nuclear technology and nuclear energy. I think what's happened here is presidents embrace that in a very public and tangible way, and that's important. And David Ratliff also talked to Clean Skies News about current progress at the Vodal site. Southern expects the new reactors to be putting power onto the grid by 2016. We do have Tyler's entire interview with him posted right here on the website, cleanskies.com. 
Well, South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford is considering suing if President Obama goes ahead with plans to cancel the use of Nevada's Yucca Mountain as a storage site for the nation's nuclear waste. Sanford said today South Carolina taxpayers have, quote, contributed more than $1.2 billion to the Yucca Mountain project, and the Obama administration's recent decision means we will get nothing in return. The state is home to an estimated 4,000 metric tons of nuclear waste from seven commercial nuclear reactors and defense nuclear waste stored at the Savannah River site near Aiken. The governor says the decision to end the funding for the repository and withdraw a pending license application at the NRC is spectacularly misguided and breaks a promise the government made almost three decades ago to dispose of the radioactive material produced by 104 commercial reactors. Meantime, Texas Governor Rick Perry is challenging the federal government's finding that greenhouse gases are dangerous to people, claiming the ruling was based on flawed science. In December, EPA issued that endangerment finding on carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases, setting the stage for future rules restricting emissions. Texas has asked a federal appeals court and EPA to review that finding. Today, Perry said legal action is being taken to protect the Texas economy and the jobs that go with it, as well as defend Texas's freedom to continue. He says our successful environmental strategy is free from federal overreach. Well, the scientist at the center of the climate gate storm arising from those stolen emails is speaking out. Phil Jones, former head of the Climatic Research Unit at the University of East Anglia, told the magazine Nature he wants to set the record straight on the science. He said he didn't manipulate data, specifically a key set from Chinese weather stations that may be inaccurate. He does admit the data from them has since been lost. Jones also denied that he tried to downplay the medieval warm period, which occurred around uh, 1000 A.D., which could indicate the Earth naturally warms and cools in cycles. Jones has stepped down as director of that climatic research unit as the university continues its investigation. The White House is behind developing clean coal technology, but states and private business must step up. That was the message today from the DOE at the National Association of Regulatory Utility Commissioners meeting here in Washington. Earlier, DOE Assistant Secretary for Fossil Energy James Markowski told regulators the White House committed $4 billion for clean coal. Other money must come from the private sector. He said another big hurdle might come with the long-term storage of carbon and how companies, states, and government will share liability once carbon is in the ground. Who's going to be responsible for this storage hundreds of years after the injection is completed? When you think about a company and you, the SEC now requires the, uh, all liabilities to be put on the balance sheet and annual reports, it will be very hard and difficult for a company to put an unquantifiable liability on their balance sheet. Let's take a look now at some energy goings on around the Beltway tomorrow. 8 a.m. That Nauruq winter meeting continues at the Washington Renaissance Hotel. EPA Administrator Lisa Jackson is supposed to give remarks there. Clean Skies News will be there. At 9.30, Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, Energy and National Security Program, hosts a discussion on green stimulus one year later, featuring a keynote address by David Sandalow, Assistant Secretary of Energy for Policy and International Affairs. Clean Skies News will be there. Also at noon, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Administrator Jane Lubchenco will lead a press conference to discuss NOAA's 2011 budget that's at the National Press Club. And that is the Energy Report. We'll see you again tomorrow with the latest energy news. For any suggestions or comments about our programming here on Clean Skies News, you can email us at contact at cleanskies.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook, too. From all of us here in the Energy News Center, good night.